Hey, uh, can anybody help me? I was trying to find the tagline. Uh, I was looking on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m., 9 30 p.m. Central. I didn't even know what time on Tuesday. Uh, I can't find it. Can anyone help me find where the tagline on the Cinefanatics news channel is or whatever channel that talks about? Anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central Time. That must mean only one thing. <gasps> Smiles. This is where we're at now. It's time for the tagline. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Typically done on Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. It is now Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We are back with the tagline to talk about news. What's going on, everybody? My name is Robert Adams. I am Chris Adams. And we're here to talk to you about movie news and all kinds of fun stuff about us personally. And it's going to blow your mind. And we are Sex bob or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we are Sex bob well, We're going to blow well, your mind with movie news I'll, and not being Sex bob I'll be frank. I try to be. I haven't succeeded yet. I try to well, be Sex bob Are you Frank or are you Sex bob Which one are you? That's that's my name. Frank Sex bob Frank Sex bob I'm going to change your, uh, I'm gonna change your, uh, your name down below on here. So... Anyways, guys, uh, welcome. Welcome to the tagline. We are back. It's been like, what, damn near a month or whatever. It feels like. Uh, yeah, so this is the new place. This is the new spot. This is what we're going to be doing. It's uh, like the old place, except it's at a new time. It's, uh, except it's at a new time. Uh, new day, new time. Yeah, anyways. Uh, how's everyone doing? Like those of y'all that are here watching live, sound off in the chat. Who's here? I see Garth uh, saying, "Welcome back, uh, Chris and Robert." Thank you, Garth. Uh, Frank Sex Bobom, lovely. <laughs> uh, so we got Garth. We got uh, Catatot. What's going on, Catatot? Who are these guys? Yeah, I don't know who we are either. This is for uh, people we- to take a screen grab for. <laughs> Wait, well, well, if you got to do it right, though, I mean, technically, do that again. No, I didn't. Okay. Well, <laughs> just remove everything from the screen and just get up. Well, that's the show, guys. We had all the time we got for tonight. Man, <laughs> you know, we're just going to start small and work our way back up to like the full show again. We're we're, we're just taking baby steps here. It's going to it's going to take a minute. Uh, or uh, three at this I'm point. I'm sorry. Frank Sex bob does not take baby steps. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> he he takes toddler steps. <laughs> Ew. That's weird. Anyways, uh, guys, it's, it's... No, it's not. Stop lying. <laughs> Uh, it's it's been a it's been a minute since we've we've been live talking about movie news and stuff. So uh, I'm happy to be back doing this because uh, I'll tell you what this is deep in my heart. This is my passion is to talk to like four people on the internet about movie news. So uh, hopefully, if we get more, that will be more of a passion that I have. But yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you to the four people that are here for being here at the top of the show. Uh, as always, except for the month that we take off, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, streamlabs.com slash Uh There's also patreon.com slash cinefanatics. Hop on the tier that you would like to hop on up there. Uh, what we're talking about Patreon, now that we're back up and running, we've got stuff coming. Uh, speaking of which, this <laughs> Monday. Frank Sex Bob Bomb always has stuff coming. Wow. Uh, by the way, yes. so by the way, guys, uh, as we have taken a break, uh, we have decided that uh, the Cinefanax channel is no longer going to be family friendly. Wait, we uh, did. No, we did it. <laughs> but uh, so first announcement for Patreon uh, this coming Monday, I believe is the 16th. We will be doing our Patreon movie study group hangout which I believe that is at the, what was it, the Maverick? Was it the Maverick tier? Yep. Yes. So the Maverick Maverick tier. tier. Hop on the Maverick tier. Come join us for movie trivia. It's going to be a hangout. That will be Monday night, probably around like 9.30 Central. 
uh, we'll get to like you're gonna notice like some of these times are about to change from what uh from what they used to be. And we'll tell oh, you why yeah. here in a minute. Late night study session. All right. My name is Frank. Guess what my last name is. <laughs> Joining us tonight, we got Frank Sexbo Bomb on the ones and Wait, twos. What? No, it's, it's Johnson. Frank Frank Johnson. Yeah. Frank Sexbo Bomb Johnson. Exactly. <laughs> on on the ones and twos. <laughs> like okay. <laughs> Coming at you hot from the crow's nest. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The, so uh, the silliness is definitely back. Yeah, glad to see that has survived the break. But oh, yeah. that's never going away. Yeah, Monday night, nine thirty p.m. Central Time. That's going to be the Patreon study group. Uh, there will be a Patreon movie watch along. I think we're still kind of torn between two particular movies, uh, but it's going to be probably like the last week of this month. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a lot of stuff we're catching up on and other things happening this month that uh, you'll find out very soon. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we're going to move the movie watch along to the end of this month. And yeah, uh, anything else? Patreon. Oh, uh, <laughs> this one's going to be kind of hard to like really talk about. But uh, as far as Patreon members go, if you are at the do tier, uh, the do tier. Uh, hold on to, uh, let's say Thursday night, the 19th, I think it's the 19th, Thursday night, the 19th at 930 central time. If you're at the due tier, something special is going to be happening that night and you're going to want to be here for it. Cause it's going to be awesome. And that's not hyperbole. Like I'm not like over hyping this up. I know what's coming and it's going to be great. I love it. I cannot wait. Like I want to skip everything and just go straight to that night. It's uh it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm will... trying to bounce him out here. He's like super excited and I'm just I'm I'm just going to give it two straights. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. He's 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 de- easily downplaying it. I am so super hyped for this and I know what's coming and just oh, it's going to be great. Anyways, Thursday night, uh 9:30 Central, so uh was that 7:30 Pacific, 1030 yep. Eastern. Uh, still got it. Yep. Still remember it. Still remember time zones. Haven't lost my time zone touch over the past month. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're not a part of the the Patreon at the $5 due tier, hop on that. It'll be worth your while. Guaranteed. It's easily worth five bucks. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Uh, upcoming shows. Today is Wednesday, the 11th of August. What are you doing tomorrow night or tomorrow? <laughs> tomorrow I'm turning 32. Lord save me. Um, <laughs> Dude, you're going to complain about 32. You do know what age I'm turning next month, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just shut up with that 32 <laughs> crap. <laughs> you're old. <laughs> uh anyway yeah I'm sure this so, can't, we can give up the family friendliness of this i'm turning 32 tomorrow and in order to uh celebrate i'm going to be streaming for a good chunk of the day on my twitch channel that is twitch.tv slash chris adams mlp if we get enough of y'all over there we'll be probably playing some community games enough people to jump in sub to the channel hop in the discord other ways you can be in the Discord also is being a part of the Patreon. I'm not going to just beat around that bush there. It's a, a Patreon or subbing to my Twitch channel. Either way, if you hang out during that stream and enough people are there to hang out, if enough people show up, uh, I might do like some Among Us. Uh, I haven't really looked too deep into it yet, but if I, if there's a way for me to get Jackbox going, I might have to buy Jackbox. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. We'll see. I would like to say that uh, he just mentioned being among us, and I'm all for that, which means that after the tagline is over, uh, Frank Sexbobom Johnson is going to be looking deep into it. I guarantee you. I will make sure of it. Yeah, I decided to pause everything you were saying just so I could say that. So deep into it. Um, <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah, Jackbox. Uh, so that- uh yeah actually this happens like here in a few hours actually come to think of it uh, technically i mean yeah so a little less than four hours here lola is sus lola is always (laughs) sus 
Yeah. It was very sus. Uh, anyway, so that's happening tomorrow. Going to be streaming. Not a whole lot. Uh, like, I don't know. Not, not just, We're just going to be hanging out. It's going to be a nice chill time for my birthday. That's what's going to happen tomorrow. So expect expect a nice chill hangout over on the Twitch. So, um, meanwhile, yeah. ne- next uh, next month, I'm gonna start my Twitch channel for my birthday, and it's not gonna be chill. They're gonna be popping bottles, and who knows, like how much skin you're gonna be seeing on my Twitch. I'm just gonna lose my right to stream on Twitch on the very first stream. Just let me ask, let me ask you a question. Do what? you know what a bit is? Uh, I do know what a bit is. How yes, do you know what the, a bit is? Because you told me. Exactly. You're not, you're not getting a Twitch channel. <laughs> I, w- I will get a Twitch channel and it will be like nothing but nipple. <laughs> Might be my nipple, but I mean, it's it's in there. <laughs> what? I, I'm trying to sell it. Is that not how you sell things? No. That's <laughs> hey, guys, how you, come watch. Actually, Nipples are being on. Will be that's on actually how you get your Twitch channel shut down. You can't oh. do that. Oh, okay. even, <laughs> even male nipples. There's, there's no nipples, bad nipples. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Uh, so your birthday hangout is tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow minus night. N- minus nipples. Um, so I guess y'all go watch that. You know what you can do I mean, on YouTube though. Nah, it's, just, it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, so do we have anything else coming up? I uh, we're not doing we're not. If, but we will talk about what if here in a little bit. One thing. You're uh, doing look, this and I'm thinking you're like Danny from uh, The Shining. Like this is your little friend. <laughs> so one thing. Danny. We, uh, <laughs> nice. Um, we got the finale of the uh, Bad Batch coming up. So me and Adam are doing a Bad Batch this Saturday. It is going to be, at, I believe, five Pacific, eight Eastern still got it. Uh, that's what's happening. It's going to be a little bit earlier this, this weekend, this Saturday, but we are doing a bad batch for the finale, a bad batch breakdown, wrapping it all up. It's been an absolute blast talking with Adam about star Wars and just nerding out with him and just his star Wars, passionate mind. And just, it's, it's been so much fun. Uh, so that's, that's coming up on Saturday. I think that's the only like extracurricular show that we're doing right now until Mm -hmm. some other like disney plus and whatnot stuff starts so yeah i think we'll pick back up the uh the at least the marvel shows i think probably the next one i think the next one is actually going to be hawkeye Mm. but i don't think that's till i think it's miss marvel it's either miss marvel or hawkeye is the next one yeah well uh, we'll pick it back up when we get to those but yeah um i don't know of like any other shows to really talk about so we'll see um anyways so yeah like we said at the top of this and for the past 13 minutes uh we've been off for like about a month so uh a long time it's a long long time it was a long time uh it's one of those if you if y'all have seen youtubers anyone talking about uh like the amount of work that goes into running a youtube channel uh especially when you're first starting you're trying like uh, all the graphics, everything you see on here, I've worked on and I've worked like hard, like it, it's like building up all these graphics and then it's just maintaining it. Uh, but that's yeah. one thing. Then you're talking about, uh, like creating the videos. And I know, uh, one of our, one of our Patreon members, uh, Vernon, he's, oh, he started a fan, the fans view channel, a fans view channel over on YouTube, uh, started off as a fans view of the FCL, the first class league. Uh, he's now rebranded it. It's just going to be a fans view of a bunch of, uh, of topics. It looks like. So, uh, make sure y'all go check out that channel, subscribe to that. But we've talked about like creating YouTube channels and he's someone who's like now learning how that, how that process is. And yeah, that, that process can be tiring. I think learning every time, yeah. every time I hear that word, I, I have every time. You got to think of the uh, the stupid apocalypse played nicely by Os- Oscar Isaac. No problem on his fault, but just the use of apocalypse in that movie was <laughs> god awful. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, it does it does make sense to take a break every once in a while. 
Yep. Um, in this case, uh, part of this break was I just wanted to like pump the brakes a bit. Uh, I was working on a ranking video, <laughs> a ranking video uh, tied into the Fast and Furious movies, and just opening this video to edit it, I was just. Oh. And he hit the brakes on the Fast and Furious video. <laughs> the- Zingo! Nicely Bam-o. done, sir. Bye. Frank Bobom strikes again. <laughs> Frank Sex Bobom. I-, I gotta say Sex Bobom because if I Frankie say Frank Bobom. Frank Bobomb is copyrighted to Nintendo, those little bomb things. But Frank Sex Bobomb, perfectly o- a okay. Um, anyways, good Frankie job, Bits. Frank Sex Bobomb. Um, yeah, so that was one of the things that was that was really troubling me that I wanted to like <laughs> stop yep. and let's let's break a bit. I know you were also kind of like, eh, I just want to. I just been mentally worn out about a lot of stuff. Like, chill. Life, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that happens. I think it makes complete sense. It's okay. So, therefore, we took a small little break. Uh, During the break, uh, we've updated a couple of things. As y'all have seen, if y'all watched as this started, uh, one of the first things that I worked on, uh, which is funny because I just finished it like yesterday. (laughs) Don't give that deep of an inside (laughs) baseball. (laughs) I'm okay with it. Hey, Uh, we just worked on it. Don't worry about when it happened. (laughs) Is we changed the intro to tagline. I don't know if y'all noticed this, but like if y'all seen our regular intros for all the other videos we've we were we've done, it was I mean they were pretty Yeah, anyways, so we changed it to that as well, adding the tagline logo. So for the last time, I think this is kind of appropriate because I put a lot of work into it. I know you don't like it so much, but for the last time, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a nice send off to the original tagline intro for the last time here we go Ladies and gentlemen, that was the original tagline. Thank you for being there, bud. We appreciate everything you've done for this channel. Godspeed with you. Have a Deuces. blessed life. Yeah, peace out. <laughs> and in some cases, maybe a middle finger. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. There's so yeah, much well, hostility. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I don't know about you, but I mean, that that intro actually personally attacked me. Like, it called my mom a female dog, which... That should be offending you too, but I mean, whatever. Um, <laughs> I don't care when people say, "Hey, you're a female dog." Oh, no, oh, that's right. It's nothing. Anyway, so yeah, that was the last time you will see the original tagline intro. It's the new one from now on. Uh, Until I do we inevitably have... accidentally click on the wrong thing. Well, Which yeah. Will... In fact, tell you what. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this even more ceremoniously. I'm deleting it out of there. It is gone just deleted it out of our video clip so i can't accidentally click on it bye bye anyways uh next thing uh is uh, there's there's more graphics and stuff there's some other graphics i wanted to get done by tonight just couldn't get to it but uh there will be some more changes slightly to the show as we continue on stuff that i really feel like i want to change so and uh, more than likely, if we have our way, if we if everything goes according to what we think, it will be a lot more changes, a lot more changes uh, coming into the next year. But you didn't hear it from me, and we're still in August, so let's not dive too deep on that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, otherwise, um, this is going to kind of, like, this would be something I would talk about when we talk about, like, what movies have you watched, but I'm not going to dive in. We're not going to dive into all the movies that we've watched over the past month, but one of the other things I wanted to do during the time off is to really start catching up on some movies. If y'all followed uh, my uh, Twitter at Robert Adams MLP, um, you will see that I am down to my last 25 movies before I hit 2,000 movies watched on Letterboxd, which is also at Robert Adams MLP. Uh, so I've been I've been knocking out like a bunch of movies that like primarily I'm trying to focus on movies that I should have seen already, like 
uh, running a movie YouTube channel called Cine Fanatics, being a part of the First Class League of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. These are movies I should have seen by now already. Like it's kind of like really sad I have never seen them. Uh, that's what I'm trying to knock out now. Yeah. So there's a couple of good ones I've seen. Like uh, Rebel Without a Cause was fantastic. I very much enjoyed that. But uh, I got a couple of more. I think I got like a small list of something I, of a couple I want to catch up on. Uh, hopefully in the next like couple of days if I'm not too busy, which I believe I am. So whatever. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I want to knock those out, but yeah, make sure y'all are following on Letterboxd. I'm about to hit that two two thousand two. I can't say that. How do you say that? Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. I don't know. Oh, good lord! If I keep trying like that, I'm gonna sound like uh, Mr. Yuniyoshi from uh, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and I don't want to sound like that. Those of y'all who know what I'm referencing, that's not a good thing. <laughs> Which is funny, also, because to be clear. As far as I'm aware, you've had not a drop of alcohol tonight. You've had that much. Is that water? No, no, it's not water. Interesting. Anyways, you've had a few drops of alcohol tonight, so screw what I just not not enough to mess up what I'm talking, what I'm saying though. So (laughs) sure, whatever. I'm anyway, not screw that up what I'm trying to defend that I'm not screwing up my work. Like, I'm not the words wronging you over here like you think the, the things are doing. <laughs> think I am. What? <laughs> None of that made any sense. So, oh, guys. As, as per usual. No, oh, guys. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. This is how we be. This is how we be over here at the Center Fanatics. <laughs> so, uh, you lo- yeah. you'll love us. You love us. Stop it. I. I have an idea for what I want my 2000 this 2000 just my the movie I watch at the 2000 spot I have an idea for what movie I want that to be I know what movie I want to come in at the 2000 spot yeah like I'm not trying that anymore uh I have an idea but anyone if anyone has any suggestions uh it's got like I think that is that's got to be like the number one movie that you should have seen by now that you yeah. haven't. I'm expecting this to be like some kind of like four, five, six hour long epic movie that is probably going to take me an entire day to get through because my ADD is terrible. But uh, still, there's movies like that that I need to see. Uh, do I need? Do you think I should reveal which which one I think I'm going to do for 2000? For the sake of time, I say no. For the sake of just mentioning a movie title, we've got things to talk about. Okay. Well, if y'all have any suggestions, Frankie's free- here to move it along. Yeah. yeah like feel free to let me know. Uh, so yeah. Time for uh, that. Did you have any any thoughts or whatever about your time off? Uh, not too much. I uh, came up with the idea. I'm going to do some stuff with movies also. Uh, be watching my Twitter in the coming days. There's a couple things like graphics wise that I want to do first. That I want to create and get going before I start working on my plan, but I've got a big, uh, big whole Twitter into potentially doing some content on my Twitch, on my Twitch. Everything starts with a twit. That's weird. Um, anyway, I'm going to be doing some stuff too. So not 2000 movies, but I'm going to be watching a ton of movies. So basically stay tuned to my Twitter. If you're not already following me, it's right there. At Chris uh, Adams MLP. Yes, Garth. I have seen Stargate. Garth is like obsessed with Stargate. <laughs> you know who's not obsessed with Stargate? Frankie <laughs> Sex Babom. Frank Sex Babom. <laughs> Who will only be a character in this episode of the tagline. He's not coming <laughs> back after this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, your idea for, for Twitter that you're going to do sounds fantastic. In fact, I'm almost like wanting to do that after I hit the 2000 because I know there's you've seen a lot more movies than me. So everything on my list, you've probably already seen. (laughs) Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's, let's move on. Uh, just, we had a nice time with our time off. Enjoyed it. Glad to be back. Moving on. (laughs) Uh, again, we're not doing a, a specific uh, show on this channel about what if, but we could talk about the what if episodes 
especially because they come out on Wednesdays and now we'll be doing the tagline on Wednesdays. Let's do a nice little like quick, like what were your thoughts of this episode? Yeah. Uh, which is funny real quick before we get started. The two of us haven't even talked about this yet. yet. We've, been nope. bu- we've been busy doing stuff all day today and we have not had a time to sit down and talk about uh, our thoughts over last night's uh, what if. So uh, last night was the premiere episode of what if and it was uh what if uh peggy carter was the first avenger Avenger. yep so we got this phenomenal episode yeah so starting off here i mean uh, you gotta talk about the animation we're gonna keep these thoughts real brief by the way the animation gorgeous love the animation style in this series already i thought it was fantastic it's kind of like a cell shaded a little bit which is pretty it cool. It reminds me of uh, Scanner Darkly. A little bit. Not not as much, but it's yeah. in that direction. Not so much that where you're questioning whether or not there's actually an actor there and they just drew over the actor like uh, the animation in a Scanner Darkly, but it's close yeah. to that kind of look. Yeah. Uh, that and the thing I want to mention about this is that it's... I, I I was really waiting for like the cast list to come up to see exactly who all is returning for their roles. What if there's a world where tagline was on Wednesdays instead of Tuesdays? So welcome to that world. <laughs> the Watcher. Hey interfered. y'all. Hey, hey y'all. Rachel. Hey y'all. <laughs> yeah. Um, Freaking miss minutes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so we don't have her loaded up into. The I don't think yet. I have it on here. Dang yeah, it! I was, I was so wanting to click on it. Uh, anyway. Uh, this was this was cool too because I was like, who else? Because it sounds I, I couldn't tell who was. Uh oh, well that just gives it a vote. I'm terrified. <laughs> it was so it was bad. I'm trying to get a thought out. We'll get it out. Just get that thought out. I'm playing all the hits tonight, y'all. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. It turns out only one person of a shut up. One person of a repeated character did not reprise their role in this in this uh, episode, and that was Chris Evans as uh, Steve Rogers. But the guy they got to play him did a remarkable Chris Evans impression. Yeah, he sounded just like him, and uh, he, I saw he actually sounded more like Steve than a lot of the people who played their character sounded like themselves. <laughs> yeah, uh, I forgot who it was. It is someone else who I've seen. It is someone popular as well. Uh, Josh but, Josh Keaton or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he did, I believe he did the voice of Spider-Man in the Spectacular Spider-Man animated <laughs> series. There you go. Which I love that series, even though it was weird animation, but yeah. So this one was pretty cool. I, I really liked the what they were doing with it in terms of uh, just kind of exploring something different. It was very fast paced because they had to cover pretty much the entire first Avenger movie redone in, you know, about 34 minutes or so. Uh, less than because credits are like seven minutes long. So uh, <laughs> they they packed a lot of essentially a lot of movie into a tiny little episode. So it did leave some of the dialogue feeling a little too fast paced, a little too quick, but such is uh, my only issue is I really feel like they beat the whole we need to dance i feel like they beat that bit kind of into the ground a little bit like okay we get it dancing was that was their thing that was the connection like, i understand it just kind of went on with that a little bit i do like a lot of the characterization stuff that they did though i think uh peggy's still like loving steve even before you know, in the movie, we, we saw her love him after the procedure. But here we see her having those same thoughts, same feelings for Steve without him having changed his physical appearance at all. So we know that that love was true. She truly loved him, not based on his physical appearance, but who he was as a person. And he exactly felt the same way back for her, feeling love for her, despite how she, her physical appearance changed and everything, too. And he didn't even feel emasculated or anything by it. So it was really cool. Uh, that whole aspect, but I thought it was cool. I thought it was a really cool episode. Action was dope. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was very well done. The only thing I really couldn't stand was uh, that other Colonel character that was in there. Uh, oh. Voiced by uh, Bradley. He was in the uh, the one shot, the agent Carter one shot. He was oh, a character. Okay. In that. okay. Uh, was it still Brett? Was it Bradley Whifford that was playing him? Yep. 
Yeah, he's playing. He's playing himself. He's playing the same character that he played in that one shot. Uh, so I, I can't remember if I saw if I've seen the one shot. I could have sworn I did. It's like Agent Flynn or something like that, Colonel Flynn. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, he was super annoying. Uh. Yeah. But I do like the the snarkiness of uh Peggy saying uh, when they were planning out the final mission type of thing. Like you're lucky you're even in this room. <laughs> like just shut up. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. Uh, but yeah. yeah, very well done. Animation is absolutely gorgeous in this. Uh, and the other thing I like was the use of the story. Uh, those of y'all who haven't seen it yet, we're, I mean, slight spoilers, I guess, but not really. Uh, that this episode pinpoints how the what if is going to go from here on out. Uh, yeah. Basically, you've got Uatu, the Watcher, is telling a story of what happens if one small thing that mm-hmm. happens in the story that we're very familiar with already. What if it went just slightly different? In this case, in this episode, it was uh, when they were going to do the actual experiment, putting the putting the serum in Steve Rogers. They ask, uh, was it Colonel Phillips says to Peggy, like perhaps you'd be more comfortable up in the the up up high looking down and she's like no Kirsten. whoever someone asked peggy to like go sit up in the loft and watch from up there she's like no i'm gonna stay down here in the movie she went up and she was perfectly fine but this was such a small like little thing like it, it it's a whole playing off of the butterfly effect yeah. and what would happen if she didn't go sit up there. That's all she had to do was just go sit up there. But instead, she stayed down below, and all of a sudden, you've got this whole other tangent universe. Uh, all these like Peggy Carter, uh, Peggy Carter variant created now. Thanks, Loki. Uh, that it could be just a small little thing that goes slightly different from uh, from the movie storyline, and now we've got a whole other story. And it's amazing that that's what they're potentially going to do with this. Yep. Uh, like I know, we've got a what if coming up. Is uh, what if uh, T'Challa was picked up by the Ravengers instead of Peter Quill? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be an interesting show to s- still see uh, what else they do with it. I like the uh, setup how they're working with it right now. Uh, eager to see the next episode, see what they're doing further on with it. Mm-hmm. Those are our thoughts on what if. Yeah. So, uh, movies watched again, I'm not going to cover like, we're not going to cover all the movies we watched, uh, but real quick, we can have, let's let give like some opinions on, uh, movies that we did see like big releases that came out in the theater or HBO max in some cases, yeah. uh, just a quick brief review. Uh, like I will, I guess I'll start with the, uh, the suicide squad. Uh, I watched it. I loved it. Fantastic. It's James Gunn back to his roots of, uh, pulling in stuff from his days working with trauma uh, and just like the fun of guardians of the galaxy mixed in with just a crazy group of characters that the suicide squad is capable of doing. Uh, I was a little apprehensive about just having so many characters in it, but it actually wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, my only, like, I would say negative on this movie is the severe under usage of Harley Quinn. Like, I really, like, she was really just in this movie just because Harley Quinn sells tickets. Like, that's that's the only real reason. Like, she really didn't do anything massively major. She was a bit of comic relief, but, I mean, I feel like you got that from a lot of other characters as well. Yep. I could have been probably okay with this movie had Harley not been in in it, but I am a Harley Quinn fan. I do love Margot Robbie. So I'm like, I'm okay with her in there. She just, I don't feel like she did very much of anything in it. So uh, good movie. Absolutely loved it. Uh, what did I, I forgot what I even rated it. I think I gave it like a four out of five stars on letterbox. So yeah. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Highly recommended if you like uh, nice, violent, gory action movies. So, yeah, I did give it four out of five. Yep. On the flip side, there's a movie I want to talk about that I didn't get a chance to talk about yet because we were off that I've also seen. And that would be Green Knight, which is an A24 movie. That's all I got to say. 
I'm just kidding. I'm gonna say more. Uh, it's very A24. So here's the thing. You watch the trailer. The trailer was the trailer in, is very enticing. It was a very interesting looking movie, and you know, good on them. They knew how to market that movie in terms of how to design the trailer. For those of us like me, and I'm gonna speak for him also because he didn't he didn't get a chance to see it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and speak for him. It's it's a it's a gorgeous movie. It's it's, it's very beautifully done. It's a thinker, <laughs> yeah. It's uh cinematography wise, fantastic. It's great. It looks amazingly beautiful. Um the story, while you know it's it's a it is a it's a tale. It's a it's a tale of uh, Sir Gawain. So if you know you know, the story of him, then, you know, kind of the story that's being told here, him and the uh, green Knight. I know the story uh, they told in Monty Python, the Holy grail of Sir Gawain. Yes. I have a feeling that doesn't apply here though. So never mind Probably, me. Not really. So this, this is a kind of a more like slower paced drawn out uh, version of that tale. Really kind of more of a uh, sit back and just think about it kind of thing. I mean, there's, Obviously, the, the movie is riddled with like metaphors and, you know, allegories and all that. But <laughs> and male bodily fluids. Spoilers. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot to this movie that, again, I, I want to hype up just how beautiful the movie is, how great the cinematography is. And if it's not at least nominated for a cinematography award, I will be shocked. That being said, if you are like the two of us and have some like yeah, a little bit of ADD, a little bit of a little bit of ADHD or whatever, uh, I need some I need some I need some stuff to happen in order to hold my attention. Uh, this is not necessarily the movie for you. This is one of those movies where an hour into it, I'm like, what time is it? Okay, we got like an hour left of this thing. Okay, cool. Well, at least we're is. halfway through. <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. It is an A24 movie. I mean, that's that's all there really is to say about that. Dev Patel. Dev Patel did fantastic in the movie. Uh, he was excellent, did a fantastic job. There's a lot of like other like actors who were coming in and doing kind of these side roles and stuff that some of them I didn't even know were in this movie, to be honest. Uh, everybody, everybody did a fantastic job with it. It's just that the way they presented it, how they were wanting to present the story, was it, it dragged a little bit for me. And I think I'm going to be the common audience going to see movies. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm in the role of the common audience. That's going to think it, it drags a little bit. Uh, there is an audience for this movie and that audience absolutely loves it and good on them. I get it. I understand. Uh, I'm not saying this movie is a bad movie by any stretch. I'm just saying it was not a good movie for me and people who are going to be like me. So, that is why I have it at two stars on Letterbox because that is my personal opinion on how I connected with the movie or didn't connect with the movie. You said it's an A24 movie, so I'm kind of curious. How did uh, either Barry Keenan or uh, Will Poulter do in it? Did they, were they good in that movie? Barry was Barry was great. Uh, Will Poulter was not in it. Wait, 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 wait. Barry was actually in that movie? I want to make sure I'm thinking of the same person. I think I think I'm thinking of the right person. He's the one in Eternals, right? Yes. Yeah. He, yeah. He was in it. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke. I didn't even know he was he was actually in that movie. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 He was in it. <laughs> He's like in all the like A24 movies, like along with Will Poulter and whatever. So <laughs> you got one of the two. Good job. That's that's awesome. Fantastic job there. <laughs> Anyways, so. Uh, yeah, I, based off of what he's told me about Green Knight, this doesn't sound like, the trailer looked cool, it looked, uh, it looked like a really good story, but it's, yeah, it doesn't sound like a movie I'm going to enjoy sitting there, it sounds like it's a movie I would watch here at home, and I would interrupt w watching it with, like, watching a couple of YouTube videos just to break the monotony of it. You wouldn't be able to watch it in one night. No. Yeah. Uh, I hate those kinds of movies. I get why they exist and like it's cool. I respect them, but it's just not my ability to focus and pay attention to. Mm. 
Which makes he's, him a bad movie watcher. All you on Twitter, oh, you, you're not, you just aren't good at watching movies if you think it's a bad. Shut up. Yeah, these highfalutin movies. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> now that you have a mustache to do that with, sort of. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyways. That's it for movies that we've watched. Again, if y'all want to see any other movies that we've caught up on, uh, check out our letterbox. It letterboxes Robert Adams MLP, Chris Adams MLP. Follow us on Letterbox. You'll see what we've what we're watching. Uh, sometimes we might. I know you're more prone to dropping like a quick review or something on your letterbox rather than like I, me. I, I'm I'm busy. I got to move on and stuff. I do want to like create the list on Letterbox. I might get I'm, to that pretty soon. I'm trying to practice my comedy a little bit and just have fun because like we do a YouTube channel, so you're gonna get from for the most part you'll get general reviews from us. Uh, thank you, Vernon. Appreciate it because it's not like that gag hasn't been beaten into the ground yet. <laughs> After um, we plugged your YouTube channel earlier in the show. <laughs> right yeah you weren't even here when we plugged it. anyway uh so yeah uh, i like to do i want to do some like funny fun stuff every now and then there's gonna be some movies that i probably actually want to like speak on and actually put a good solid review on letterbox but for the most part I'm, I'm trying to work on the comedy a little bit guys yeah yeah anyways uh let's move on to movie news cue the new promo video Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is what's happening in your world tonight. We apologize for the interruption. Back to you. <laughs> I kind of played all right. I, I liked it. Uh, I mean, it's fun. Sorry. Yeah, it was fun. Anyways, we're gonna, movie we're, news. We're going to do some more of those uh, in the future to yeah. highlight different segments of the show. So that's that's kind of the idea playing there. So, movie news. Uh, let's talk about some box office, box office numbers. What do you got some, for us? Some box offs. I don't have the actual numbers pulled up right now. Um, I just really, the only thing I really want to talk about here is, uh, instead of like highlighting numbers, was talking about this whole debacle with the Suicide Squad and its box office stuff and the commentary on it right now. That it's It's been kind of crazy. I don't know if you guys have seen a lot of the commentary on the Suicide Squad lately has been, well, it's a bomb, it's a flop, it made like $25 million or something like that, and the movie costs like, what, $150, $200 some odd million, whatever. It cost them a huge amount and made a sliver of that back this last weekend, which most movies, and if we're talking about big blockbusters, usually make a good chunk of their money back within the first weekend, typically speaking, if they're successful. The Suicide Squad did not hit those numbers, and so analysts are out there going, well, it's a flop. It's a flop. It didn't work. Ha-ha. And I don't know why people are going ha-ha over that, why they're taking joy in a movie like not succeeding. We want to see movies succeed because they employ people, and they bring us art in many cases, and they bring us entertainment and value. Why do we want to see movies flop? I don't know, but I still I still want to expect to see Avengers Endgame always beating Avatar in the most highest grossest movie of all time. Highest grossing movie of all time. Good lord. You, you know that's wrong, right? Yeah, I know. Avatar retook that spot. I know. Really, I want to I want to see Avengers Endgame take it back. I want to see Disney. Avatar lose. Re-release at Disney. Yeah. Anyway. So Everybody is like going off on why the Suicide Squad bombed this, that, and the other. And they're saying that uh, it's your day and date. Your day and date caused it to bomb. People are wanting to stay home or they're not wanting to go out and see it. And it's like, okay, you can't have your cake and eat it too on this argument. If you're going to say day and date is the reason it bombed, then you have to understand that the viewers who are coming in for that movie are actually bringing in money for Warner Brothers also over at that movie the problem is is that a lot of these people who are analyzing this and going well it bombed aren't taking into account that there's a covid variant out there that some people are kind of still uneasy about about going out into public and into the theaters over there you go there's that there's the fact that it is a hard r movie it's not made for families so you're not getting that PG-13 box office that you would get with like a Marvel movie, so to speak. Uh, you are, yeah, it's 
there's there's many different factors. It's not just simply that, well, it's just not a successful movie. A lot of people really enjoyed The Suicide Squad. They really found it to be... A lot of people are even saying it's one of their favorite comic book movies of all time at this point. So that being said, this kind of commentary that's happening right now over the box office is kind of it's kind of silly. It's kind of ridiculous. So it's like, oh, it's a bomb. It's not good. Well, not succeeding at the box office right now, given the time period that we're in and what's happening and what has been happening. It's not a good indicator. Mm-hmm. It's not a good indicator. Yeah, and it's kind of really hard to gauge because you've got movies like this, and this is going to be something we're going to talk about again here in a little bit, um, just because this is our main topic also. But uh, you've got stuff like HBO Max has already, they're already well known for doing day and date releases uh, that they started back in December with uh, Wonder Woman 84. And the thing is, is we haven't really been hearing when they release box office numbers and revenue over a movie being released over the weekend. We're not hearing from HBO like exactly how much money they would have made or they are making, so to speak, however that's working out, yeah. uh, from people watching it on their platform. For example, we are in the process of trying to save up money for a trip to LA later this year, hopefully, <laughs> should the pandemic and everything just work nicely. Please, y'all go get vaccinated. Just help help, help some brothers out. I mean, go get go get vaccinated. Like, Seriously. let's I, I want I want the world to open back up and go back to normal. Okay. Uh anyways, trying to save money for that trip. I, I am having to cut back on things. One of those things might be like, hey, if I can watch a movie on HBO Max instead of going to the theater, I, I would like to take that right now. If the movie seems is seemingly uh, appropriate for that. I was okay with, going, with watching Suicide Squad at home on my computer here, yeah. uh, especially because he was a little hesitant to watching it just because of the gore factor that this movie could be. So it was more of fan. like... Let, yeah, let me watch it first, and then I will tell you whether or not this is a movie you would want to watch. Uh, <clears throat> spoilers, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> he he doesn't want to watch this movie. Uh, but that aside, yeah, we're not getting word back from HBO. Much like the alternative was Disney actually did release some numbers on how much money they made with the premiere access to Black Widow. In which case, now you have that hardcore number to figure into your box office for how Black Widow performed. And of course, we all know Black Widow did fantastic. Yeah. Especially because we're still technically in the pandemic. Black Widow did amazingly if you count, if you figure in uh, physical box office with the premiere access, did swimmingly. So we don't get that from HBO. It's kind of hard to tell exactly how they did. So. Yeah, that's part of that, and it's 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 really hard because you, without throwing that number into the public, you leave yourself open for people to dissect and decipher and make their own judgments and opinions and assumptions, which looks bad on your product. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the interesting conversation that's going on with the Suicide Squad right now. I think this conversation is going to continue on as long as we're dealing with. Uh, with Delta and not the airlines because no one wants to deal with the Delta airlines um, ever. I'd rather so, deal with Delta than spirit though. Just saying spirit is doing fantastic right now. The the virus or the airline, the airline. Oh, okay. 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 Good. Yeah. Good. Like this, this whole, this whole past week they were canceling flights left and right. And nice. I know like here, here in Austin, almost all the spirit airline flights were all canceled. Yikes. So that just that just turned uh, Austin Bertram Airport into a big hangout spot. <laughs> Dope. Um, anyway, that's kind of all the conversation on the uh, on the Suicide Squad in the box office there. There and let's uh, let's move on to the next news topic. Well, since we're talking about Suicide hey. Squad, <laughs> let's keep the ball rolling. Uh, Mister Bloodsport himself, Idris Alba, or is it Elba? I'm not sure. 
I need the movie trivia schmodown to answer that for me. But Mr. Idris Elba uh, has gotten himself casted as the voice of Knuckles the Echidna from Sonic the Sonic the Hedgehog video games. Uh, of course, this is also like absolutely 100% confirming that Knuckles will be a part of the second Sonic the Hedgehog movie because uh, they entered, they announced this with this graphic, which is really cool because I have no idea how that glove was going to look in the real world. I remember from like the video game, it was just all white with like these two little notches on it. But uh, just- yeah, I am yep. hyped for this. I like the idea of Idris Elba doing that voice. I think mm-hmm. his voice kind of fits the character. I think you were talking, we were talking about this. Uh, was that earlier today or was that last night? I can't remember. Last night. I think it was last last night. Uh, you actually had a suggestion for someone slightly better than Idris Elba. And I actually like your suggestion more, especially because we were sitting here doing like the impersonation of that person and yeah, it seemed to work. <laughs> yeah. I thought the funny thing would be is if, and it's, it's only slightly, it's only slightly different. I think they're heading in the right direction with Idris Elba, but if they wanted to go a slightly different way, I thought it'd be funny if uh, Jason Statham was doing the voice of Knuckles. Oi, Sonic. Hey, mate. My name is Knuckles the Echidna. You know, kind of a Jason Statham kind of kind of a thing. <laughs> I'm going to mess you up. Bollocks. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> British words. <laughs> See, Mar- kinda, you- Marmite. Or whatever. <laughs> That's... Not Australian. Anyway. But, well, I think echidnas are Australian also. I don't know. We're cine fanatics. We're not uh, anthropology fanatics. There's that so. joke. Playing all the hits. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you get you get a little bit of that with Idris Elba. I mean, he's not too not too far from not too far removed from the Jason Statham. Uh, he's still across the pond, you know, all that. So mm-hmm. I think it's gonna be fun. I think uh, Idris Elba doing the voices, it's gonna be a fun, it's a fun choice. Yeah. Um it's i'm really i actually am really eager to hear it i'm i'm on board uh yeah I, i'm actually just eager to see knuckles and and tails and you know kind of get their get their action in the second sonic movie which is and crazy because who thought the first sonic movie was going to be as good as it was yeah uh are we still like on, are, are we in the place where we think that the the sonic the hedgehog movie is still uh one of the best video game movies ever made one of uh, yeah i think i'm trying to think uh you and i probably both have the opinion that the best one made so far has been detective pikachu i i think detective pikachu was what i'm not a pokemon fan i was i was not the age demographic for pokemon when it came to the u.s he was yeah as someone uh, who loves pokemon obviously i play some of the games still on my twitch channel uh, twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Uh, as someone who does <laughs> the movie tales, <laughs> that's inaccurate because we've already heard tales. <laughs> Oi, um, Sonic. Actually, yeah. Oi, Sonic, get back here. I can't keep up with my two tails. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, as someone who loves Pokemon, I believe that they did right by the franchise with Detective Pikachu. So I'm actually eager for them to do more in that world. And they are doing a, a Netflix show, a live action Netflix show, by the way. So that's going to sp- be. Is it supposed to be tied to Detective Pikachu, the movie? I don't know if it. I don't know if it is or not. But I mean, if it's a live action show in the Pokemon world, there's probably not too many differences you can do with the design of the Pokemon in order to uh, keep it kind of grounded a little bit. So, yeah, that was the other be- thing. That was the other thing that helped really sell it is they made these these Pokemon that were like 2D characters. They fleshed them out in 3D. The ones that had fur actually had like individual hairs that you could see the mm-hmm. texture of the ones that are reptile based were was very scaly Scales. and reptile ish. Like they did a phenomenal job of making them realistic while still and, holding on to that, that cartoon uh, style. And Mr. Mime was nightmare fuel. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, like like we were saying, yeah, Sonic is definitely up there. Sonic is for sure one of the best comic book movies. Comic book? Video game movies. What? Video game, uh, video game, game movies. movies. So, that's uh, oh. that, is, that is for sure a fact. 
Isn't that weird? Like you, you just said uh, messed up saying comic book, but come to think of it, if you remember by like the late nineties, early two thousands, we were in a period where like nobody could make a comic book movie good. Like the closest we got was like blade and nobody knew that that was a comic book movie. Uh, Other than that, before that you had like Batman 89 and the Superman from the seventies, the Christopher Reeve, Superman one and two. That was it. That was your, no one could do a comic book movie, but those were, those were like, those were a little more hokier too. And people like really were like into that kind of style for their superheroes anyway. So those were especially, especially we got into Superman three and four. Ugh. Anyways, uh, I would like to see that happen to the uh, video game movies as well. Anyways, uh, moving on, let's let's go back to talking about this uh, day and date thing with uh, movie theaters. Yeah. So, uh, especially because of Suicide Squad, this has turned into a gigantic uh, conversation in regards to, we're assuming this Delta variant is going to be squashed pretty soon. Everything is going to go back to normal, much like it was before July 4th. Uh, And that we're going to go back to movie theaters being open. Like a, a lot of people I know of have already been back to the theater at least once since mm-hmm. the pandemic first started. And they've usually gone back for like these movies that came out like Black Widow or some like movies that came out earlier this summer. And the thing is, we still have now this precedent set of movies being released for viewing at home versus the theater. And even if there's no pandemic, this is something that theoretically could still exist. And what's the possibility of its existence? Uh, I know, like, the title of this, uh, I put, like, bye-bye movie theaters, nice to know you. No, I don't think movie theaters are actually going to die out. There's a certain aesthetic to watching a movie in a theater versus at home. Uh, I will tell you from my own personal preference, watching a movie at home is great because then I can always pause it and go pee. That is probably like the number one benefit. I don't care about the amount of money I'm spending in the theater on the tickets, the concessions, food, beer, whatever. It's that I can go to the bathroom and I don't miss any of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's my personal preference. I like the idea of being able to watch these movies at home, but what does that mean in the future for how these are going to be released? Well, so one of the big things is, and one of the reasons why this conversation is even spurred on is because uh, WB has recently announced that they are planning on going back to their theatrical exclusivity in 2022. Um, Which, you know, provided of course that we, uh, we're calmed down with a lot of the pandemic stuff by then, God, please, hopefully, um, by the time that's kind of eased down in 2022, then that makes sense. It's like, okay, now we got theaters, of course, returning as they should back to the normal. If you want to go see a new release movie, you go to the theater outside of, of course, the ones that still have specific deals with streaming services. But mm-hmm. uh, in regards to saying this, AMC was like, Yay! We're so happy to hear that because we hated you when you announced the day and date stuff at the beginning. And now we're just so happy that you're announcing that you're going to do exclusivity. It's fine. Um, that's kind of what, uh, that's kind of what spurred on this little bit of a conversation. So the question is based on that, based on theater chains being ecstatic, you know, being over the moon of the idea that, studios are still going to want to respect the old school way of say old school was like the before times way uh what we did in in 2019 in the the before times back what we did in the good old ripe year of 2019 um (laughs) going to see movies uh in the theater the movie theaters are ecstatic about that the studios obviously you know they i believe that they do actually make larger box office by having that theater exclusivity first uh, I don't think that they are quite reaching their potential. Despite the talk earlier, they are quite reaching the potential still, even with the releases on the streaming services. So what this looks like is it looks like a situation that I think is both good for studio and 
and theater chains, theater chains, mom and pop theaters, everybody, provided, of course, the pandemic calms itself down and eases itself on out. <laughs> uh, if that doesn't happen, then the day and date ending in 2022 probably gets revisited and then we're back to the same issue again with these theater chains like like Regal and AMC and Cinema going, whoa, 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 I thought you guys said you weren't going to do that in 2022 anymore. And then we have the whole freaking to-do over that again, which is just an absolutely ridiculous conversation to even have when it's like, cool, yeah, but we're trying to keep people from dying. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> that point, though, uh, Rachel here in the chat, <laughs> in retrospect, Endgame came out at such a perfect... Could you imagine a world where Endgame was... Delayed. Black Widow, where it got delayed for an entire year. Could you imagine how insane people rioting, dogs and cats living together, like, Massive just... <laughs> like, yeah. that would have been insane to have to wait just that whole other year again. Like, waiting for Black Widow was a chore enough. Coming off of the end of Infinity War, ooh, ooh, that would have been terrible. Well, also the fact that technically by now we should have also seen Shang Chi and Eternals. So, yeah, all three of them we should have seen by now. Yeah, but uh, I'm not, I'm not grasping at the edge of the cliff for those movies like I was in game after watching uh, Infinity War. There's a reason Avengers yeah. Endgame was briefly the highest grossing movie of all time. Uh, everybody and their mom and dog and cat and lizard wanted to go see this movie, and yeah, lizards lizards have feelings too. They wanna they wanna watch and see amazing things. I guess so. uh, I believe this to be a truth. But yeah, now the new conversation in this another part of this that's what's causing issues is uh, Black Widow was released and did a phenomenal job in both the theatrical box office and on Disney Plus. But you have an issue here. Uh, if y'all have all seen the storyline of Scarlett Johansson suing because the movie being released on Disney Plus was apparently a breach of her contract that she had on there. What's what's the thoughts and feelings on, on this? First of all, I didn't even know <laughs> that a movie playing in a movie theater and not going straight to a streaming service at home was a part of an actor's contract. Why would that be a part of an actor's contract? What does back that matter? End. Yeah. Back end stuff, all that getting the uh, revenue from it. That was an interesting conversation. I know we kind of missed the ball on that conversation a little bit, but yeah, that, that was, that was an interesting conversation there to, to be had because I think they're like obviously actors in those cases, uh, they get paid still through their movies being shown on the streaming service. But the problem is, is and I think the precedent that's trying to be, be set here based on several of the uh, actors besides Scarlett Johansson, even who have reached out and were like, Hey, stop it. by with their lawsuits was that you don't, uh, you don't just up and decide things that you, wrote one way in an actor's contract, you don't up and change that without renewing or renegotiating the contract. And that's, that's what happened is Disney did this with several uh, actors and renegotiated the contract without actually renegotiating the contract. They just re they just went ahead and did their own thing. And uh, it doesn't sound that bad to all, a lot of us because a lot of us are sitting here with the mindset of, well, these actors get paid billions anyway. The studios make billions anyway. Who cares what all this is all just oh, way above our heads regardless. The point is, is that it's, it's, a, it's a respect issue. It is a respect issue. It is honoring the people that you have hired to come in and perform and do a certain role, portray your character, star in your movie, honoring their time and their commitment by honoring the contract that you write with them. If you don't do that, this is, this is what you get. So that's kind of the, the long and short of that one a little bit. And I've heard this argument and the answer to that was like, yeah, but when these contracts were created, there wasn't, no one ever thought of the possibility of a pandemic having any kind of an effect or influence over 
the world or like the co- cultural zeitgeist that we have for over a year now, like this wasn't something that anyone could foresee or decide upon. So therefore the situation has changed. Everyone should be changing with it and at least have the, the common sense to know like, Hey, I get it. Y'all are doing this because there's a pandemic. That's fine. Y'all change up how it works. But But what's the issues and problems that lie therein with that? The problem is, is that, as the pandemic kicked in, we saw, we saw the changes that had to be made. We knew that there was going to have to be some movies going to streaming or whatever, just so that they can continue getting their release structure and and going and everything. The problem is, is that you have plenty of time to actually, you know, get on a zoom call with your actors and the people that you've set these contracts with and renegotiate the contract. You a hundred percent can at that point, the actor is going to be like, I get it. We can't do things the way we intended. We just can't. Let's, yeah, let's talk about this contract. Let's re, let's re, redo it, you know, and restructure it according to what the situation is now. The problem is, is that based on what has been reported, Disney didn't do that. They just changed things. And they could have sat down with these actors and gone, okay, let's re talk about this structure because we can't do what we planned before. So that leads me to question. I know we we make a joke about it. I think we've made the joke. Everyone's made the joke. Disney like damn near owns the entire world. Disney is in a position where they could they could make a deci- a decision that could change like global warming or feed the hunger or feed the hunger feed the hungry <laughs> feed the, the homeless hunger. feed the hunger. <laughs> They're a Snickers bar apparently. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, like they have the ability to do these things. So with that in mind, they have the ability to just change like contracts and you just agree. Like, what do you, do you really want to go toe to toe with Disney's lawyers and lawsuits and stuff? Like not the point. That's what we're, I guess we're about to find out. Yeah, uh, that's not the, point. It, the point. The point is now we're seeing actors go, Hey, no, we have rights. We have rights in this situation. You're going to listen to us and you're going to respect the contracts you already wrote, wrote with us. Yeah. So and, it's kind of a, a weird torn argument because common sense would say, Oh, we're changing this because the world has changed in a way we could not have foreseen. So therefore we expect you a person of common sense. Who's also living in this world to change with it. Yeah. Um, but is this something like, what does this mean for contracts going forward? Because a human being is not capable of thinking of every single possible thing that could happen. Uh, I mean, that's why I see like a lot of contracts, especially like insurance contracts that act refer to them as act of God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you going to see a lot more of something like that in these contracts? And uh, you're going to see a, a lot pandemic of- clause. Uh, yeah, I gar- Oh, you're going to see that like everywhere, like yep. it, guaranteed uh, from a mom and pop, like little shop on the corner to yep. like big Disney contracts and stuff like it. it, it it's insane. Yeah. And like uh, Rachel saying here, MCU is too high, high profile for them to risk the PR. But that's the thing. Disney is so Disney is so high profile on this. They are almost at the point that they could do whatever they want forget what public opinion is and they'll still be okay. They'll be perfectly fine in the long run. And that's what's, that's what's dangerous for this. Uh, I completely, so I know I sound like I'm the counterpoint to this argument. I'm completely for uh, what Scar Joe's doing. It it, it makes sense. It is in within her right. Uh, I know like Kevin Feige has come out saying that he's in support of her as well in this and that he was surprised that like his actors are being shortchanged and that Bob Iger was like, Disney, what are you doing? Oh, even Bob Bob, Iger was saying this. Okay. Bob Iger, Bob Iger was disappointed in the way Disney was handling the situation. So that's big daddy. Bob Iger was like, "Mm, my company that I uh, was the CEO of is not handling this right. Then you're like, okay. I love how you say this now after we've been talking about this for like 10, 15 minutes and like, okay, so basically what you're saying is this gigantic problem that we've been talking about is about to not be a problem anymore because Bob Iger is like against it as well. So not necessarily because Bob (laughs) Iger's not the CEO anymore. Bob Chappick is, but, Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 
but he's still like on the board. He still has some say and thoughts and feelings and opinions that can him, influence the the entire board of Disney. Him having an, an opinion on it is a big deal. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So I don't know. All that to say, you know, we're seeing how the pandemic has shifted things and changed things up in regards to uh, all the stuff that's going on. It's really interesting to see uh, how everything shifts, especially as we start going into next year. Um, you know, right now, uh, last I heard, we're looking at a 50% uh, vaccinated rate in this country. You know, 50% of the people have been vaccinated. There's a lot more who probably will get vaccinated. They just need to be put at they just need to be put at ease first for whatever their issues are. Um, so we are going to be starting to push hopefully towards a higher vaccination rate, in which case situations like this kind of stuff, just uh, it, it shakes out over time. And, and next year, hopefully the whole not having the day and date anymore is not going to be an issue. I think the biggest change, uh, my kind of my final thought on this, the biggest change I think that we're going to see from the pandemic going forward with theaters is a smaller the uh, theatrical window, a smaller window where these movies are playing in theaters before they get released for home release or streaming. Uh, I think I read somewhere about, uh, I think it was Warner brothers. Warner brothers struck a deal with AMC theaters uh, to a 45 day release yeah. window from uh, be it being theatrical to, going on their streaming platform. So I think Paramount did that also. I know Paramount yeah. was the big one. I think I heard doing that. So I think, I think you're going to start seeing that all across the board for all the major studios. They're all going to do stuff like that because it just makes the most sense, you know, especially as the pandemic winds down again, hopefully uh, you have a smaller window for people to actually go to the theater comfortably to see the movie before it starts being released to home release. Yeah. So. Um, Anyways, so that's probably going to do it for that discussion. Uh, in the future, I know coming up, uh, as far as movies being released, I know uh, coming up this weekend, we've got a couple of a couple of high-profile movies that are being released, finally, in some of their cases, uh, one of them which being Free Guy. I know we plan on seeing Free Guy uh, here in like the next day or two or so. Uh, pro we, we'll probably try to get a, a review up like a standalone review. Uh, it's just, we got a lot to work on <laughs> for like the next five days uh, yep. up until this next Tuesday for some weird reason. Uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, uh, so we might not get to that right away. Uh, if nothing else, we'll talk about free guy on tagline next week. Uh, I want to go check out uh, Don't Breathe 2 because I'm a fan of the first Don't Breathe, but I know the second one, there's a lot of controversy surrounding it, so I might go check that out here pretty soon. And I know the other big one this weekend is going to be uh, Respect, the biopic of Aretha Franklin, uh, which looks so good. Uh, I am a big fan of Jennifer Hudson playing the Aretha Franklin role, so... Uh, like I really, really want to know. Uh, I'm saying that while reading Rachel's thing, so I messed up my sentence. She wants to know <laughs> how do gentlemen celebrate birthdays? Well, this year the gentleman is celebrating on twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. He's going to be streaming for a bulk of the day. Stay tuned to the uh, all the social medias and the Discord if you're already in the Discord because you will see. You will see when I go live. I believe I'm going to probably go live afternoon, sometime in the afternoon. I think we got something that we're going to need to take care of in the morning uh, outside of all this stuff. So that's going to have to take priority and come first. But at, when that's done, then I will probably be coming back here and popping on to the stream. And uh, we're just going to be hanging out and having some fun. We're going to start with a few little games like I've been playing and then... Uh, We'll move into whatever and see whoever shows up and how many people want to hang out and play games. And maybe we'll play some community games if enough community is there. And who knows? It'll be it'll be fun. That's how Jim wants yeah. birthday, at least this year. In future years, maybe he uh, goes out and hangs out with family and friends and, and such. But this year we are uh, we're twitching. Yep. Uh, Vernon wants to know what happens on Tuesday. Well, uh, Stay first tuned. of all. You already know. Second of all, you jerk. <laughs> Second of all, everyone else will find out very soon. In fact, if you are following me on Twitter at Robert Adams MLP, 
Uh, you might already start to suspect because the ball's already started rolling. So, uh, yeah, make sure you follow. It's it's gonna be a blast. I'm so eager for Tuesday. I mean, I don't so. even I don't even know what you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> What? No. What? Uh, no. Real quick, before we start wrapping up, we did get a Streamlab in from all the chat. And <laughs> just because it feels right, dollarshaveclub.com. Thanks for the $1, all of the chat, for your little joke. Well, I mean, that means you should be able to shave. You were given a dollar. So, Dollar Shave Club, I mean, it's in the name. <laughs> if it was a $5 Shave Club, he would have. Probably all or he. I don't know why I said he. All of the chat would have donated. Stop $5. talking. Stop talking. Frank Sex Bob Bomb is coming in to tell you he ain't shaving anytime soon. That's Frankie Sex Bob Bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Which now I I, I have to. Chris question. Adams, however, really wants to shave this off his face because Frank Sex Bob Bomb is really starting to freak him out a little bit. So I have to ask, why was it called Dollar Shave Club and not like Thousand Dollar Shave Club? That like that that rolls off the tongue a lot better. Just a Thousand Dollar Shave Club, that would be great. I think you know the answer to that question. No one's buying shaving for for a thousand dollars. So yeah, is the anyway? Is there a bowling shirt club? There might be. It's all oh. the people that follow the Big Lebowski and. What what there actually is a religion about that. It's like du- dudism or something like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, guys, we're going to be wrapping up this show here. There's a bunch of stuff coming up, of course. If you're not already hopped up, up on that Patreon, if you're not hopped up on that Patreon, if you know what I'm saying, get hopped up on that Patreon and uh, go check out any of those tiers. I do recommend the $5 dude tier. That is, speaking of dude, that is the tier that you get to join dudism at and uh, do watch alongs and anytime we do any kind of like behind the scenes stuff for our FCL matches, you're going to get that there as well. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You're probably going to want to hop onto that one there pretty soon. Um, so there's going to be a lot of fun stuff popping up there, but if not, then of course, stop you can saying join- hop. <laughs> hop, hop up on it. There's the, uh, there's the Maverick tier as well. You can join for, all the uh, helping us study for the trivia goodness, which we will be doing, I believe this Monday, this upcoming month, Monday. Yep. We are doing some trivia studying this upcoming Monday. So if you want to jump into that tier, I'm not saying hop anymore. If you want to jump into that tier, you can do that. You can skip into it too, whatever you feel like. And you can join us on Monday to help us study for any future FCL matches we have coming up. So just that's any, gonna be- any, any possible ones that could just pop up or hop up in his case. Yes. Anyway, that's all the that's all the fun stuff that you can hop, jump, skip, lie down on top of, roll around like a little crazy dog in some leaves, uh, sniff. You can slap it a little bit. Dang near every verb I'm coming up with right now can be taken the wrong way. You know, do whatever you want over on that Patreon. Those tears are right for you there. I know they are. Just just do it. Take it away, brother. Anyways, yeah, uh, make sure you hop on those. Join us on the Discord. Uh, you actually opened up your uh, subscribers from Twitch, Twitch to the Discord also. So uh, we've got a lot more people participating in the Discord. There's a lot more fun conversations and stuff going on. So it's growing. It's 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 going slow, but it's growing. It's So, yeah, come join. Hop on the Patreon, subscribe to them on Twitch, all of those things. Come hang out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, movie watch along. There will be a movie watch along uh, towards the end of this month. We're still trying to figure out exactly what movie we're going to do. But yeah, uh, that will be later on, probably the last week in August. Uh, and Twitter, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Cinefanatics MLP, at Robert Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox, and Chris Adams MLP also on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. It's called branding and it works very well. So, yeah, make sure you follow us on all of those platforms. I would like to thank, and I'm pretty sure my brother would like to also, but I'm the one talking. I would like to thank all the people who have watching this live, who are in the chat joining us. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being a part of this grand return after a month off. It's it, it's nice to be back here. It's nice to be able to talk movies on the internet again. We appreciate y'all being here. 
Uh, we also appreciate everyone watching, dropping a like on this video. Again, it's been a month. YouTube would like to see some kind of uh, content uh, and interaction going on on this channel. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. YouTube would like you, and so would we. We would absol absolutely love you for that. If you're catching this on a replay later on, comment down below. What did you think of this? Did you have any thoughts, feelings, opinions? Let us know down below in the comments and share this with your friends and family so they can all see what crazy things you watch and then they'll silently judge you for it. Who the two uh, morons you turn on are. But we won't judge you. We don't. There's, this is a judgment-free zone over oh. here. I don't know about over yeah. there, but at least right here it's judgment-free. No, we, we don't judge because we are the morons. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so anyways uh that's gonna do it for tonight again thank y'all for being here thank y'all for uh, being a part of the chat for a wonderful welcome back to the youtubes we very much love y'all being here we will see y'all again i have no idea like i actually think today is tuesday so i'm trying to think of the rest of the week like oh tomorrow's wednesday what are we doing wednesday night Next oh yeah this wednesday. is wednesday yeah, so we will see y'all again. If you're Patreon members, we will see you on Monday. If you're a fan of my brother and Adam Witt doing the Bad Batch breakdown, they will see you on Saturday. Otherwise, uh, we will see you a couple of other places, maybe outside of this channel, uh, before Wednesday. And Frankie Sex Bob will see you in your dreams tonight. Go away. Nobody wants you here anymore. That was really weird. Anyways, thank y'all for watching. Hope y'all come back next Wednesday. Maybe, hopefully, please. Uh, we will see y'all at that time. Good night, everyone. Bye. So freaking awkward.